You are going to love today's video. I'm attempting to go where no man has gone before. As far as I'm aware, this is the first video on YouTube of its kind comparing how today's hearing aid technology copes in background noise. And whilst there are a ton of videos covering why you can't hear in background noise, there isn't actually anything testing these hearing aids. To be perfectly honest with you, now I've made a video covering this subject, I know exactly why, because it's not been easy at all. However, we have an incredible team here at Hearing Tracker. All right, who am I kidding? I'm filming this from my spare room right now. But nonetheless, we do have an incredible team here at Hearing Tracker. And we've joined forces with Hear Advisor, who've built themselves an audio lab which allows for independent testing for all hearing aid technology, and also allows for the comparison of products using a standardized test battery, which finally allows us to produce some comparable results away from the information we get from hearing aid manufacturers, which I will share with you today. Honestly, I cannot wait for you to see this. Actually, let me rephrase that. I cannot wait for you to hear this. Oh yes, I have sound samples for you too. Hear Advisor's tests have narrowed today's video down to the best six different types of hearing tech that money can buy at the moment, which includes the Oticon Real, Phonak Lumity, Lucid Engage, the Sony CRE E10, Sennheiser Conversation Clear Plus, and then finally, Apple's AirPods Pro second generation. Yes, that's right. You heard me correctly. This is also a mix of two prescription hearing aids, two over-the-counter hearing aids, and also two earbuds. All right, so let's get to it. Firstly, let's compare the features of each of these hearing aids, helping you to understand which may be the most suitable for your hearing loss. And then I'll share the sound files recorded in the lab so you can actually hear the difference between them yourselves. And then I'll declare the winners. And I tell you what, you will be pretty surprised by who wins today. So beginning with the physical side of things, firstly, we have the two prescription hearing aids, the Oticon Real and Phonak Lumity, plus the Lucid Engage over-the-counter hearing aid, which are all a receiver and canal style, meaning that the main housing sits behind the ear with a thin wire that comes over the front and the receiver or speaker sits down your ear canal. These three pieces of tech can be coupled to your ears in a few different ways. Firstly, and most commonly with generic rubber tips, which can vary in shape and size from an open fit to closed or even with a power dome. Alternatively, with the two prescription hearing aids, a custom ear mold can be made for the shape of your ear. This involves a trip to the audiologist and they'll take an impression of your ear, which is then sent to the respective hearing aid manufacturer. This process normally takes around about two weeks from start to finish, and your hearing loss is actually the thing that determines whether a rubber tip or a custom mold is the most appropriate for you. But I'm giving this small yet very important part of your hearing aids quite a lot of airtime today, as believe it or not, the sound of a hearing aid will be completely transformed by changing this part of your hearing aid. And it can also have a significant impact on how your hearing aids will cope in a noisy environment. However, panic not. With the prescription hearing aids, it's not down to you to select the appropriate setup for your hearing loss. This will all be done by your audiologist. On the other hand, if you have the Lucid Engage, you'll have to scroll through the user manual yourself to know which is the most appropriate for you, as there's no audiologist involved within the fitting process. Saying that, I believe that in time, as the world of OTC hearing aids grows, you'll be able to pay for an audiologist's time to assist you with the setup of any OTC hearing aids. Moving on, we then have the three earbud styles, with the Sony CRE E10 and the Sennheiser Conversation Clear Plus adopting the fully in-the-ear earbud style, and the AirPods 2 Pro, the classic earbud style, which sits in front of the ear and rests on the earlobes. These all come with a selection of rubber domes for you to choose from, which again is pretty important that you get it right, depending on your hearing loss. The Oticon and Phonak hearing aids are both available in a wide range of colours, and they're all produced to match different hair colours now rather than just being skin toned. Your audiologist should have a colour chart to help you choose the right colour for you. They're also both matted nowadays, so they don't tend to catch the light and they blend in that little bit more. I find that the most popular colours that patients tend to choose in clinic with me is the Chroma Beige with Oticon and the Champagne with Phonak. 
With the Lucid Engage, you have access to three different colors, either beige, black, or gray. And then finally, the CRE E10 and Conversation Clear Plus are both limited to black, and the AirPods Pro are only available in Apple's iconic white. All of today's hearing aid technology has its own individual fitting range, which is essentially the level of hearing loss that they're capable of dealing with. Starting with the prescription hearing aids now, the Oticon reels are available in various power levels, which are determined by the interchangeable receivers that could be changed by your audiologist in clinic, depending on the severity of your hearing loss. They're available in either a 60, 85, 100, or a 105 decibel receiver, as shown here. So if your hearing loss falls within the marked area here, then these hearing aids will be suitable for you. Similarly to Oticon, the phone at Lumity is available with various different power levels, from standard, moderate, power, and ultra power, with the fitting ranges being demonstrated here. This essentially means that both prescription hearing aids are suitable for either a mild, moderate, severe, or profound hearing loss. With the main theme of today's video being background noise, it's definitely worth me pointing out that Phonak have a very unique receiver style called ActiveVent that I'm personally a huge fan of and I've had a lot of success with in clinic. ActiveVent is a type of receiver with a built-in moving piston that changes its position depending on your specific listening environment. And it diverts either more or less sound naturally down your ear canal or on the contrary, via the hearing aids. In turn, this will change four different things. Firstly, how well you hear in background noise. Secondly, how your own voice can sound. Thirdly, how clearly you can hear. And then finally, how music sounds when it's being streamed from your phone. If you're wondering if this matters, absolutely. There are both positives and negatives to having your ear canals either open or closed. And depending on your hearing loss, sometimes it's beneficial to have a hearing aid that can do one or the other, depending on your listening environment which until ActiveVent was released by Phonak, it wasn't actually possible. For example, in a quiet environment, you may well want the vent to be nice and open, allowing sound in and out, giving you a nice, natural feeling, connecting you with your environment. Yet when in noise, it's better to have your ears completely closed so that all of the sound that you hear is via the hearing aids, having been cleaned of background noise. When it comes to assessing the suitability of both the Lucid Engage, Sony CRE E10 and the AirPods 2 Pro, it's a little trickier to quantify the types of hearing loss that they're suitable for, as they're advertised as being available for those with a perceived mild to moderate hearing loss, which technically means there's no real fitting range to show you today, as there is with the prescription hearing aids. In fairness, it's also pretty tough to judge your own degree of hearing loss, so personally, I'd recommend getting your hearing properly assessed prior to ordering anything off the internet. Finally, we have the Sennheiser Conversation Clear Plus which technically isn't a hearing aid, nor is it an over-the-counter hearing aid, and nor is it possible to personalize them as you can do with all of the other tech that I'm covering today, which I'll come on to shortly. But it is TWS technology, standing for true wireless stereo technology. However, these devices are pretty special, so if you're wondering why on earth they made it to today's list of hearing tech, then you'll hear for yourselves when I play the sound files later on in this video. As you can tell from the fitting ranges for these hearing aids today, they're all pretty similar if you suffer with a mild to moderate hearing loss and should technically be suitable for anybody watching this video with a mild to moderate hearing loss. However, if you do require something a little bit more powerful than the over-the-counter hearing aids, then you'll need to look down the route of the prescription hearing aids that I covered earlier on. As you know, I've been discussing three different types of hearing aids today. Prescription hearing aids, over-the-counter hearing aids, and then true wireless stereo technology. But what I haven't explained so far is what that means in terms of your involvement with the setup process, as it's definitely quite different between the three of them. Prescription hearing aids have been around for decades now, and the process of having them fitted has evolved over the years to optimize them for your lifestyle, your hearing, and the anatomy of your ears. Being fitted with a prescription hearing aid involves visiting an audiology clinic to have your hearing tested by an audiologist. During the initial consultation, your audiologist will discuss the challenges that you face on a daily basis to understand exactly what the hearing aid needs to overcome. They should then assess your individual hearing loss, including where along your auditory system your hearing loss originates from, and then recommend the most appropriate hearing aids for both your hearing loss and for your lifestyle. The final part of the process involves a fitting of your hearing aids. We should always include real ear measurements to ensure the correct levels of amplification are being delivered by your hearing aids 
And then there are a range of other tools to verify the function of your hearing aids, plus a thorough follow-up process. On the other hand, the OTC hearing aid setup process is all down to you. You can buy these devices either online or in store and perform a basic hearing test using an app and the OTC hearing aids themselves. Based on that test, the technology will then attempt to calculate the most appropriate setting for your individual hearing loss. Similarly to the OTCs, the TWS setup is all down to you too. However, there isn't really much of a setup process. It's more a case of listening to a couple of sound files and choosing which is the most comfortable for you. Now, one super interesting thing that I think is really important to share with you today is that when we tested today's technology, the initial self-fit settings from both OTC hearing aids and click and fit from prescription hearing aids delivered far below the audibility that you'd get from a prescription hearing aid which has been fitted by REMS. Meaning from your perspective, that's less amplification than you technically get from a set of professionally fitted hearing aids. So for me, this really reinforces the importance of an audiologist in the hearing aid fitting process. As you can imagine, there are both advantages and disadvantages to both of these types of technologies, and only you can determine which is the most appropriate for you. It's important to note that prescription hearing aids offer a far more comprehensive and involved process, while it can be argued that OTC hearing aids offer far more convenience. Today's tech has various different ways to adjust them, either via their respective apps, which you can see just here now, and then a few of them can be manually adjusted by pressing the respective buttons on the devices themselves. One big question, however, is do you really want to be adjusting them? When I think about my patients in clinic, the majority of people want something that they can put in their ears in the morning, forget about, and then take them out when they go to bed at night time. On the other hand, if you do want to make adjustments, it's good to have that backup. I have to say now that there is no comparison whatsoever between the apps with the prescription hearing aids far excelling the rest. With both Phonak and Oticon giving you access to the volume, graphic equalizers for adjusting the bass, mid and treble, and Oticon giving you access to their speech booster feature, which fully engages the hearing aids noise attenuation features. In my opinion, Phonak takes the lead as far as the app goes by also allowing you to adjust the noise reduction features, directionality and compression ratios. Plus, one particular feature that I like with Phonak is that if you adjust the hearing aids for a particular scenario and you like those settings, you can press save, it will save your program, and then you can come back to it whenever you like. The rocker switch on the back allows you to both increase or decrease the volume manually as well. Moving on to the Lucid Engage, the app has a basic volume control, a seven band graphic equalizer, and it also allows you to choose from four preset programmed called Mild, Moderate, bass boost and max, which should be selected based on which you find the most appropriate for your type of hearing loss. The rocker switch on the back of the Lucid Engage allows you to both increase or decrease the volume manually as well. The Sony app for the CRE e tens called Hearing Control is a little bit more basic. It allows you to adjust the volume, bass and treble and the directionality of the microphones, with no physical buttons to press on the devices themselves. The Sennheiser app is similar to that of the Lucid Engage, and it allows you to change programs from relax, communication, and streaming mode. And it also allows you to manually adjust the clarity of speech too, with the button on the devices themselves, allowing you to also cycle between those three different programs. Finally, the AirPods 2 Pro has no specific app to make adjustments to the settings. However, you can customize their transparency mode and activate conversation boost in Apple's accessibility menus. Now adjustability is a very personal thing. Some people like to be able to make adjustments to the settings on their hearing devices. Others don't want to have anything to do with them at all. Only you know what's right for you and your lifestyle. Of course, it's also important to take into account your understanding of technology and things like your manual dexterity too when making the right decision for you. I'm trying to keep all of the things that I discussed today relevant to background noise. However, I think it's also worth sharing some stats on a couple of other factors, such as battery life, which I'll talk about now, to give you an understanding on how practical these devices can be for daily use. One big factor that I do love about all of today's technology is that they're all rechargeable. However, both the Oticon Reels and Lucid Engage also have a disposable battery version if you'd like. So this means that for the most part, there are no fiddly, wasteful, disposable batteries to change every week as we have with other OTC hearing aids or prescription hearing aids. Now they do, however, all have a very different battery life from a single charge. 
Both Oticon and Phonak boast 24 hours per charge. The Lucid Engage will give you 20 hours of life per charge. The Sony CRE E10 will give you 26 hours of battery life per charge. And in my opinion, you'll get an underwhelming nine hours from a Conversation Clear Plus, and then five and a half hours from the AirPods 2 Pro. So why do I think that this is important to mention? Of course, if you're thinking about using any of these devices as hearing aids, then you definitely don't want them dying partway through the day. And in my opinion, battery life should definitely be something that you take into account when investing in this technology. So guys, that's both the physical and practical side of things covered with today's technology. But I have one more trick left up my sleeve, which as I promised, is a world first and something never seen before on YouTube. So let's take a listen to how this technology sounds. If you're not particularly interested in how we did the testing, I'm going to go into a little bit of detail now for about 10 or 20 seconds, so just skip forward. But for the techies out there that are interested in how we performed our lab testing today, they were all programmed to manage a mild to moderate sensor in your hearing loss. And for the purposes of keeping our criteria strict and comparable between the different technologies, we've not evaluated any device's performance for more severe or significant hearing loss levels. Now we've done this mainly as the OTC hearing aids and earbuds tested aren't specifically designed for anything greater than a mild to moderate hearing loss. It is something that we'll be doing in the future, so do watch this space. Now, Hear Advisor recreates realistic sound fields in their lab using a range of ambisonic environmental recordings and multi-talker scenes. The hearing aid recordings are then made through their industry standard acoustic mannequin and processed using a hearing aid speech perception index version 2. This cleverly models the impaired auditory system and predicts the speech intelligibility benefits that you may experience in the real world from each of the hearing aids. If you want to know more about the testing process or protocols, then you can find them over on hearadvisor.com. All right, so I'm out of geek mode now. So much work has gone into bringing this video to you today with almost 50 devices tested using this process. So I'll share with you two of the scenarios that we tested them in. Firstly, a quiet office, and then secondly, a busy cafe. Now for listening to these files, I'd recommend wearing a set of headphones or earbuds for the best listening experience. And so let's see if you agree with us on which technology is better. I would love for you to drop your thoughts in the comments beneath this video. And when I say better, thinking about how natural they sound, plus the clarity that they're providing. So let's start with the Oticon Reels. Hey John, you hear about the meeting this morning? Yeah, I just saw the email. I wonder how... Hey, you no, you must have missed it. Looks like we're finally getting a break. Phonak Lumity. Hey John, you hear about the meeting this morning? Yeah, I just saw the email. I wonder how... No, you must have missed it. Looks like we're finally getting a break. Lucid Engage. Hey John, you hear about the meeting this morning? Yeah, I just saw the email. I wonder how. Hey, you know, like no, you must have missed it. Looks like we're finally getting a break. Here's the Sony CRE E10s. Hey John, you hear about the meeting this morning? Yeah, I just saw the email. Looks like we're. Next up, we have the Sennheiser Conversation Clear Plus. Hey John, you hear about the meeting this morning? Yeah, I just saw the email. I wonder how... No, you must have missed it. Looks like we're finally getting a break. And finally, the AirPods Pro. Hey, John, did you hear about the meeting this morning? Yeah, I just saw the email. I wonder how... No, you must have missed it. Looks like we're finally getting a break. Now, bearing in mind that they may all sound a little bit tinny to your ears, as remember, these are specifically programmed for a typical mild to moderate hearing loss and all the tech that you've just heard is boosting those high frequencies. So, what do you think? Which sound do you think is better? Make sure you let me know in the comments, I'm really keen on your thoughts. All six hearing aid technologies that we've covered today made it to the list as they're deemed the best of the best for 2023, and probably going into 2024 as well. With the Oticon reels coming out on top for all prescription hearing aids based on lab testing, and the Phonak Lumities a very, very close second both receiving the Hear Advisor Expert Choice Award for 2023. So tell me what you think. Did you think that one was better than the other? Let me know in the comments. From the pool of OTC hearing aids, the Sony CRE E10s came out on top, offering greater speech and noise benefits than any other OTC hearing aids that we've tested to date. 
and the Lucid Engage again coming in a close second, not quite functioning as well as the Sony CRE E10s. However, there is something for you to think about and that comes down to the style of those hearing aids. As the Lucid Engage are a receiver in canal style, it may feel more comfortable when it comes to the occlusion effect. Plus, if cosmetics is on your mind, sometimes a receiver in canal style can look a little bit more discreet than an earbud style hearing aid. And then finally, we have the two best speech enhancing earbuds for noise with the winner being the Sennheiser Conversation Clear Plus. Of course, the Apple AirPods Pro 2 are still a great offering, and you may even have a pair lying around that you can try out to see if they offer any benefit before investing in any new technology. But the Hear Advisor Lab doesn't lie, and we didn't find them to be as effective as the Sennheisers. So let's be honest now. Every manufacturer of hearing tech promises the world from their hearing devices and they've all performed their own testing in their own labs and told us that their hearing technology is way better than anybody else's. So I hope that you're as excited as I am for what we're able to demonstrate with our own new independent lab. And believe you me, this is just the beginning of us, helping you to identify which tech is the most effective technology for you. So my next video with data and sound files coming out of the Hear Advisor Lab will be comparing the top hearing aids out there for music streaming quality. So watch this space. But that's a wrap for today. Check out this video covering the best invisible hearing aids out there at the moment and press like if you found today's video useful. And then make sure you subscribe by pressing this circle just here and I'll see you in the next video.